Hi, this is the songbird. And continuing with um, the late night show. This late night show is about being responsible when you drink. Or if you do drugs, please stop using it as an excuse not to do right. Like I said in the last part of the show, before I had to take a break, is that um, they didn't want me at the meetings because they were offended. People were standing up upset, offended, that I could say that if I bought a pint of wine, I would still have some left tomorrow. I would always leave like one inch of wine in the bottle, which a friend of mine had pointed that out to me because I really didn't notice it, you know, um, as a big thing. But the person said, you always leave this amount of wine in the bottle when you're done with it every time. And then you just, I said, yeah, because at that point when I try to, if I try to take another sip, even though my brain says that I want another sip, um, it makes me feel nauseated. It just won't go down. My throat will close so it feels like I'm, like, like I'm forcing it. And so, you know, everybody has choices. And I'm really tired of people pretending that they're powerless to the point of no choices. You have a choice. You have a choice to suffer um, what I would call suffering when you want to, you have to, the moment when you know you have to put it down. Okay. But people are not, they're just not willing to do that. Um, like I said, if you're a mother, okay, oh, wait, I'll go back to this part. When I was working at the Reverend Hotel, okay. And, uh, you know, this, this day that I, that I left the hotel, um, after work, I had made about $115 that day, somewhere around the round figure to that. Um, and I gave her $50, um, the owner for my room, because at the first of the month, I would always give her my whole entire check, you know, my disability check for being agoraphobic. Um, I became agoraphobic after my children were almost murdered while I was trying to go to school and work at the same time, part-time, both. Um, point being is, um, I would give her, I gave her $50 that day and I had, uh, some money for myself, like what, 60, whatever. Um, so I went to the grocery store. The Packer store was right next to the grocery store. And yes, I did buy drinks and yes. Matter of fact, I spent $15 on drugs that day. I sure did. Had all that in my pocket. And I'm walking down the street, and I had my dinner in a bag. And my breakfast and my bus fare to get back the next day. Go home and get back the next day. And I run into this lady that was living in the hotel the year before for free. For free. Um, and that's fine. And I was happy for her. She had an apartment before I could get an apartment. Cause again, my credit had went from 800 and something down to zero on my AB credit <laughs> because of the land flipping scam. So I was happy for her, even though, you mean, you know, um, she says to me, you know, you got $5 for a bump while I'm over there congratulating her on her apartment. And she, you know, she showed me her apartment in. I mean, I didn't go in her apartment to show me from the sidewalk because I had to go wait for the bus because I needed to go home and sit down after all that work. And um, I did more than 17 rooms that day by myself. And I was tired. Um, and she says, well, I owe the landlord $70. But do you got a, do you got a $5? We could get a, a bump. I said, what is a bump? She said, a hit, you know, some cocaine or whatever. I says, no, I'm going home. She said, but don't you work there every day? They pay you every day? Yup. She said, well, you can come to my house. You don't have to go stay at the hotel. I says, nope. I'm going to my house. She's, I said, that's good that you they got a, gave you an apartment and everything. Wow. And she showed me where her porch was, but I didn't go up on the porch. Showed me from the sidewalk pointing over there. And she says, I don't want to stay here anyway because they won't let me have my friends on the back porch. And my friends, they sell. And when, when they sell, they give me some after they sell so many. And, and he told me he don't want, he can't tell me who not to have on my porch.
I said, okay, well, you know what? Maybe you should think about that, you know, so you have somewhere to stay. And maybe, you know, you know, uh, if you ask everybody to give you five dollars instead of a hit, you know, every time they sell something, you should make them. If you're gonna, you know, keep them there because you just want them there, you you need to find a way. You need to, you know. And you, she said, "Yeah, and I got my friends. They come over here." I said, "You need to be charging everybody five dollars, and get that landlord his seventy dollars rent, and you can have your permit. And then they tell everybody to go. <laughs> tell everybody go home, and enjoy your permit." It's all yours. She says, no, I don't care about that, girl. I go stay back at the shelter. <laughs> Just as I was sitting there thinking about how I wish I had a a five-room, a six- or seven-room apartment, yes, of space, and with no kids or not. I like a lot of space and all my nice furniture I lost in that in that house. Because I couldn't carry it on my back, and I definitely couldn't afford shelter, I mean, for my stuff. If I couldn't uh, get in a, I mean, I mean, come on, I couldn't afford 18 rooms worth of furniture to put in no storage. <laughs> I had 18 rooms of furniture. <laughs> I had to give it all up. I couldn't afford to keep it in some room somewhere god knows how many i would how many rooms would i need for 18 rooms of furniture but either way back at the back to the subject which that is part of the subject but back to the real subject of being irresponsible just because you're on drugs <laughs> i mean i'm glad that i'm not glad i'm agoraphobic but in that view i'm glad that i was agoraphobic and even if I wasn't agoraphobic, there was no way because I went over to check the shelter once in the beginning before I got the job, before the six months of walking. And they told me I was going to have to stand in line every day, um, hope to get a room. I mean, not a room, sorry, a bed. And I asked her, would it be the same bed every day? And she told me no. I asked her, could I bring my own sheets? And she told me no. Um, you know, so if, and she said that it wasn't always even possible to get a bed and you have to be in line early. Okay. And maybe you might get the same bed and I couldn't see myself sleeping in all kinds of beds and sharing beds when, when I was, uh, in first grade and a uh, family came from out of town and they came and spent the night at our house grown people and I told my mother when they left I was nice until they left and when they left I said I'm not sleeping in there uh, my mother had to change she tried to wash everything I said I'm not sleeping in there I don't care if you washed it bleached it I mean I'm sure I didn't say all of that but I, the bottom line was I kept saying I'm not sleeping in there they slept on my bed they slept in my sheets I don't care that you washed them I don't care if I get punished. I'm not sleeping in there. My mother had to buy a whole brand new uh, box spring and mattress. She, she tried to, um, you know, I was young. They tried to trick me, her and my stepfather. I still knew the difference. I, was, I said, I'm not sleeping in there. They had to get me a brand new spanking new tags hanging off bed. So there was no, I mean, I was like that at age five. So I can't even say it's because of agoraphobic and what happened to my kids when I, you know, I got agoraphobic when they almost got murdered and almost died from lead poison, whatever. It's not even that because I was that way since I was five years old. And that's my point. Whatever people are doing when they're high, they were already like that inside 100%. And I think it's real devilish for people to use that as an excuse to just get their way all the time, you know, slapping people and saying, oh, I didn't mean it. I was high or uh, stealing something, and then, oh, it didn't mean it, I was high. That's the same person that was stealing from you when they were sober, and you just didn't know about it because they were subtle, and maybe they had a lot of money. You, there's people who have lots of money in their pocket, and they are sober, and they steal for fun from people, from the store. I know them. I would never say their name. I don't hang out with them, but they brag about it. So people, you need to smarten up. All you people who are not addicts, you need to smarten up. And all you people that are addicts, you need to stop lying. You need to stop lying. Just please don't lie. Don't lie and say, well, you know, I had to get in the car and drive. No, you knew where you had to go before you started drinking. You knew what you wanted to do. 
you know, why would you put your son on the porch to sell drugs and say, oh, every time my son, he's only 11, he's not going to go to jail. So if he sells for the dealer and then I get one every time he sells, why would you do that to your son? Expose him to that. I'm not the judge. God is watching. I ain't here to judge. I'm saying, don't go to the meeting after you get sober and say, I did it because I was getting high. That's why I put my son on the corner to sell. No, you did it because you had no morals. Because many times I was high and I felt bad about even cooking dinner late. So I know that ain't real. It's not real. When a woman sits there smoking money and then she says, my, my kids are home in the dark. I didn't pay the light bill and they eating a can of peanut butter. No, drugs didn't make her do that. Come on. I've been high and felt bad feelings guilty feelings while I would still have money in my pocket. No, wasn't broke yet. Nope. If I didn't pay the bill first, I couldn't rest. I had to put the drugs down. That's why they threw me out of the meeting because I could put the drink down and the drugs and go run and do what I had to do. I'd be like, no, I can't just sit here and relax like that without doing it. So that's how I know that people are telling lies. And then the people who are able to, to not to do that is because they really don't care. Just let's just start telling the truth. It's not because the drugs It's because they don't care and they didn't care if they wasn't on drugs. That's just the real truth. People need to wake up, wake up, wake up. <laughs> Please wake up. It's not an excuse when you know your so-called friends that call your sister take it and say, oh, can, when they know that you could put it down because you're going to force yourself to force, force yourself to put it down and then without the meeting. And then they come over and they say, come on, take me to the bank. And they know you're nice and they get you to give them money that they're never going to give you back. And what? I'm on drugs just like you. Off and on, but I put it down. But you, you want to use, oh, I was on drugs. I just had it. Can you just give me some more money and I need a bag of food out your freezer because you sold your food stamps. No, I don't think that's right. I think it's real devilish. And I think that a lot of people are really manipulating people and lying and blaming stuff on drugs and alcohol. Just blame it all. Don't blame the alcohol. It was all you. Because as a matter of fact, as soon as I took one sip of beer, it made me think about what I had to do more and go do it and get it done. I couldn't just sit there and just get high and not do what I had to do. That's why I know people are being devilish and telling lies. Lying. Lying to those foolish people who really believe that drugs and alcohol overpowered those people's minds and they can think straight about what they're supposed to do. That's not real. Please wake up, people. Please, please wake up. Please. Please. And stop telling people, hear a sinner's prayer, because that don't help, because they use that for an excuse. And I don't believe that either. I believe that that on the way to pay my bills and any other time when I'm off or on drugs, because even when you're off drugs for years at a time, you still got to pray. And just because you don't go to church every Sunday, I don't believe it that when you say, God, please keep me off drugs so I can, and don't let me drink nothing. Just let me go pay my bills and do what I'm supposed to do and keep me right. I believe God hears me and anybody else who says that prayer. So, you know, people who go to church, please stop lying to people and saying that a God can't hear a sinner's prayer. And God is only gonna hear you if you come to church every Sunday and pay your tithes. Please stop telling people that. Please, because then they're using it for an excuse like they have no hope. Peace of light.